Hello everybody, my name is David. Thank you for joining me today for today's video. Today's video is the hubris narcissist. Many of you may never have heard that term before. What is hubris, right? It's a, it's a word term used in old literature. It means excessive pride or self-confidence. Some synonyms are arrogance, conceit, haughtiness, pride, vanity, self-importance, and self-conceit. Does that describe the narcissist or what? Feelings of superiority, never equal. That's, that's the theme, never equal. Always superior, I'm better, I have to be better. One of the most, which is one of the most common tragic flaws for the hero or heroine. The president of a company never checked, always right. No one wants to stand up to the president, right? Everyone's below them, not equal. Right, So the, a good president of a company would actually form a position and hire someone to check them, to call them out on their BS, to be better. Right? But the narcissistic president doesn't want that. They have status and they want to protect that status. Hubris or pride makes us self-conscious and tends to protect our status rather than strive for something better. It's this anxiety, this fear. Oh, I'm gonna lose my status. Always looking backwards, looking down, worried about people instead of wanting something more, something better. Never admitting fault. Narcissist. Pride forces us to focus on the downside instead of the upside. When you value, and the biggest value of you that you have is status or appearance like the narcissist, then we are always worried and scared and anxious of losing that status. The narcissist is rigid. Don't flex, don't change, don't budge, right? <clears throat> Pride focuses on what could, what, what wrong could happen. Never looking ahead. Stephen Guise, and I'll put this uh, story down in the description box if you guys want to follow it and read this, read this article. Stephen Guise lists two ways pride can ruin your life. Pride is an inordinate self-esteem conceit. So the first way Stephen Guise explains how pride can ruin your life is something, a term called high-risk tolerance. Life's best returns often require the greatest risk. So it's not that we want to take risks all the time. It's that we are able to. We are able to be vulnerable. I say that all the time, don't I? We have to be vulnerable. You can't, you, you can't grow and move forward in life without being vulnerable, without, without taking a, a chance, risk. The narcissist says, well, what if I fail and everyone sees me? Right? The ego, pride, hubris. The second way Stephen Guys explains how pride can ruin your life is he says pride is cyanide to a relationship. Relationships are the most important thing in our lives and they poison it with their own pride and hubris. Humans don't respond well to being put down, do we? And when you have a relationship with a narcissist and their pride, it's that feeling that they're always better than you. And here again, not equal, right? So this comes from parenting, right? Personality disorders, especially narcissistic personality disorder, is from forming, in, is a child forming into an adult and their parents play a big part in this. The child makes up for the parent's shortcomings. And this comes out in so many different forms, okay? It could be this... Um, well, the, the parent has shortcomings and doesn't allow the child to form their own autonomous true self. The, the child is there for the parent. And the parent could push them, you know, with just tons of, you're better than every child, you're prettier than every child, you're smarter than every child, you must succeed. This is what's important. Not equal, again. Confidence comes from positive experiences. Okay, children don't have much confidence and they must have positive experiences. Being able to fail, 
where the narcissist was not able to fail. May even be, you know, abused by focusing on their failures. You're bad, you're wrong, you're a failure. That is very painful to the child, okay? And they will reject that part of themselves and form this false narrative to please the parent. You see that? Because that's what is important. They're, they're taught in life, that's what matters. That's what's value. That's your value. The parent or parents of a narcissist gives false confidence without trying. You're my son or daughter, so you're better than everyone else. And this can be, you know, negatively reinforced or positively reinforced. You're so much prettier than her. You're the prettiest girl in the classroom. You're, you're so much smarter than everyone else in your school. You're smarter than, you know, the neighbor Johnny. You're prettier than Lisa. Not equal. This is done with conceit and judgment by the parents. Not allowing to fail. Comparing to other children, which makes massive, massive low self-esteem. They reject that and they'd be better than everyone else. See that? Not equal. <clears throat> Pride makes you weak, while vulnerability makes you strong. This is why we are stronger than the narcissist. We must be vulnerable, not all the time. Just like I said, we don't always want to take risks, but the ability to be vulnerable, okay? The problem is, is that we are too vulnerable. We were raised being vulnerable and open all the time, weren't we? All the time. Not being able to defend yourself, stand up for yourself, argue with parents. This is okay. This is, this is healthy. To be equal with the parent. Okay? So, the narcissist was never allowed to be vulnerable. And when they're in adolescence... They said, I'll never be vulnerable and no one will ever, ever hurt me. Okay? So they have this self-appointed status, right? False status. And always worried that I'll be knocked down. That someone will come along and take that status from me. Fear and anxiety, worry. The narcissist, right? And the, and the us was forced to be vulnerable all the time, always being hurt. And so we must learn to be vulnerable, but safely, okay? And when we do that is always realize that we are equal, we're equal. Narcissists have a pecking order. They don't believe we're equal. They kind of think like dogs. Dogs kind of think like, you know, I, I have a position somewhere and I'm always better than these and I'm, I'm less than this, okay? And that's the narcissist. Doesn't work, does it? It sets the child up to never express their own self, to reject anything that has to do with failure. Where the us, the victims of this stuff, are never felt equal. Less than equal. Pride ruins a relationship. They have to be better than you. They protect that false narrative because I can never be my true self it's too painful I must be better than you and I'm always concerned and worried and anxious and afraid someone will knock me down or somebody will expose me and show my true self that's bad shame okay so theme is equality we're all equal, and this will help with your self-esteem. We never compare ourselves to other people. We don't compare our children to other children. We're all equal. You're pretty, not the prettiest. You're smart, not the smartest. You tried. You don't have to win. It's okay that you failed, okay? We give our children courage to try. We encourage them to try. Where the, the parent of a narcissist might say, no, you don't even need to try. You're the best. Making up for my shortcomings. Where I don't feel equal. So I have the child 
to do and accomplish and succeed at things that I could not or too afraid to try. I make my child try. And like I said, this comes out in all kinds of different ways and forms, shapes and sizes. Okay, That's why it's hard for doctors and scientists and stuff to put their thumb or finger right on exactly how a narcissist is formed. But this is the basis. And like I said, it can be negatively reinforced or positively reinforced. You're so pretty, you're so smart, you're so you know, successful in business. Or you are the worst. You're, you're dumber than every kid. You're uglier. You're stupid. And that's showing the children, oh, I must be better. Do you see that? So, theme. We're all equal and we must be vulnerable to ever grow in life in a relationship. That's the main, main component of a relationship to have emotional connection, to be able to talk and express yourself and ask for what you want, what you need and how you feel, is we have to be vulnerable. And that's why your relationship with the narcissist will never, never be successful, will never grow, okay? Because they will never be vulnerable. It's a wall that they put up. They do not value emotional connection. They don't care who you are. They care what people are, and they surround themselves with people they believe will increase their status. Okay? I hope this made some sense and offered some clarity for you guys, because the more that we learn and understand our abuser and the relationship we had with them, the better we can heal, the faster we can heal. Okay? So, uh, please ask me questions down below. Anything you want, I'll answer them all. And uh, love yourself first. Thank you, guys. Anybody that wants coaching, daviddemars.com. Bye-bye.